focus very much has been on the U.S. Barack Obama winning. Look, market reaction, was there much of one? There was a huge market re reaction, James. It was pretty slow on the market until the election beca uh, came into focus this afternoon, and we actually saw volumes picking up. And by the end of the session, $3.7 billion being traded. If we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian share market. This is what it looks like. And you can see that from 2 p.m. onwards, we saw the market rallying on the back of an expectation that we would see an Obama win. We've seen Obama winning office, and it looks like we're going to see majority of our Republicans in the House of Representatives and Democrats in the Senate, which is still quite difficult. But it wasn't just the Australian market which rallied. We saw a big reaction in terms of the US futures, gold prices, as well as the currency markets. And if we have a look at how markets have performed since Obama came into office in 2008, we've seen the US S&P 500 index rallying 53%. If we have a look at chart, a chart of the S&P 500 index, this is what it looks like over the last five years. And you can see it's been a good one for the US stock market. Unfortunately, the Australian market has lagged. We've only gained 11.5% in that time, but one of the big winners has been gold. Gold's been up 133% while Obama has been in office, so not surprising to see gold prices rally in Asian trade. In fact, we saw gold prices up by half a percent, silver prices also up by 0.9%, and markets really turning around in Asia into the black. The Australian market doing well, up by 0.7%, but the U.S. futures actually down by 0.6%, and that's partly because we saw a lot of the U.S. reaction uh, and the Obama win being priced in by the U.S. stock market last Night. We're going to be uh, going through the ins and outs and ramifications of today's U.S. presidential election win by, uh, by Barack Obama. For now, though, I want to look at some of the other news of the day. And there was a bit around, Julia. Uh, Harvey Norman, we spoke a little bit earlier just off the back of their release of those sales numbers. Look, it doesn't make for great reading. And as a result, we saw some more fair degree of weakness in terms of their share price, albeit not as bad as we saw at one stage. In the end, I think they closed down about 2%, but we, when we were talking before, they were down as, as much as 4% at one stage. We did see some of those losses uh, disappear by the end of the session, so not a bit bad result given the numbers coming through. And I guess the market hope has been that we see an end to some of the price deflation that's been going on in the electronic space. We've seen Nick's uh, Dick Smith uh, heavily discounting to try and get rid of excess inventory before sale its sale and uh, I, I guess a lot of our retail is being forced to discount uh, as a consequence of that as well so we were hoping to see some margins stabilizing there but it does look like sales still under pressure there we saw first quarter sales down by 10 percent profit before tax down by 20 percent some of that was due to currency movements. We've seen some pretty big moves in terms of the deterioration of the euro and a bit of a deterioration in the pound, a bit of <coughs> Harvey Norman's overseas businesses. That's had an impact. But also, if we strip out the Clive Peters as well as the Hearts uh, results out of the equation, if we have a look um, at it, if we have a look at global sales, then we would have seen a fall of 4.6%. And on a like-for-like -like basis, we would have seen a fall of 7.8%. But of course, Australia is still where a lot of the pain is. If we have a look at Australian sales, down by 11.5% for the quarter. And on a like-for-like -like basis, down by 8.7%. So Australia is still the very di a difficult place to do business for an electronics retailer like Harvey Norman. A lot of the price now being derived from the property uh, portfolio, which is worth about $2.1 dollars or just over one dollar and forty cents and Harvey Norman down by 2.2 percent today uh, with some quarterly results a bit of a trading update interesting reaction to begin with we saw uh, them weak but in the end closing up I think it was about half a percent I think in the end we saw quite a bit of strength coming through for the banks and CBA's quarterly result makes it the third update that we've seen from a big four bank in the last few weeks. We've now heard from NAB, we've heard from Westpac and we've heard from Commonwealth Bank. And we're seeing some trends emerging in this uh, in this banking space. One, we're seeing the retail banking business quite strong for the big four banks. Business banking though still remains quite difficult and there's a lot of competition in this area as well as funding costs still remaining relatively uh, elevated. And the wealth segment for Commonwealth Bank, it's great to see funds under management and funds under administration actually increasing and mm. part of that has been the good stock uh, performance that we've seen by the Australian share market in that quarter that uh, CBA re res, uh, reported but it was also good to see the net interest margin remaining steady but really this profit result was a solid one 1.85 billion dollars in terms of cash profit but it was really boosted by two things one was trading income which was better for the quarter and the second thing was cost cutting and I think we're going to see cost cutting driving a lot of the return on equity as well as the income 
increase in profits or the stability in profits that we see from banks this financial year. Yeah.